Hey guys, what's up? It's Wiesna here. We are at my studio, True Sound Studios, and today we're gonna get into some parallel compression. True Sound Studios is in your ears. Now, I found out that not a lot of people know what parallel compression is, or maybe how to use it, and I've been using it for a while. It's really just nothing more than a technique. But let's get right into it and show you how I use parallel compression. Okay, so first thing, um, I'm just gonna let you listen to the track real quick. Okay, so as you can hear, it sounds good. Uh, the drums are punchy, uh, the vocals sound good, but we need to make these drums cut more and punch more in the mix. So the best way to do this is to use parallel compression. So we're first gonna, let me first show you, let's drag the screen. Okay, so we just got very simple, just kick and snare. And then the snare comes in. And you can see right down here, we got kick and snare routed to two separate channels. So right now, as you watch the master output, this is a really big thing that I deal with a lot with here at the studio is people send me tracks that are, you know, crushed at zero already, and that doesn't help. So between negative five and negative seven is a great number. So as you can see right here, like negative 5.2, great place to start. And we're going to try to hang around that area. Um, the whole time and that's for the master output master output okay so um, first thing we want to do is we want to create a drum bus so we're gonna do drums and so this is separate this is think of these as all of our tracking channels and now before it goes to the main output what it's just all the way over here um, this is what like goes to the speakers. We're going to run all of our drums to the drum bus. So I'm very simply going to click drums and drums for both the kick and snare drum. So now if we play the, our track, all of our drums now are just coming over to the drum bus. So drums sound good, but, um, besides a little EQ that I put on the kick drum because it was just very boomy. I just took off a little 75 and a little bit of 40 just to make it a little bit, a little bit more manageable. So uh, first thing we're going to do on our drum bus. Now we are not going to touch the kick and snare as individual instruments. We're only going to use it all as one. So uh, we're going to use one of my favorite drum compressors is the Fairchild or in this case Waze version is the Pugue Child. So Let's get to the snare part. So without the plugin, then with the plugin, okay, so that's good. We're just getting a little bit more control now out of that, the kick and snare. So. So this is just our drum bus. Now we haven't done anything else. Maybe that snare is crunching a little too much. Okay, so that sounds good. So now what we're gonna do is, this is one way to do parallel compression. Now I'm not saying this is the best way or the right way, but this is one of the two ways that I do it. So what we're gonna do is over on our kick and snare channels right here, kick and snare over here, um, we are going to, now that we have this another bus that we made we're going to call this one drums p comp for parallel compression so what we're going to do is for our kick and snare channels we are going to separately run this to drums p comp or drums parallel compression so if i mute our just straight drum channel now we should have a totally another uh, set of kick and snare running to just the drums P comp uh, drum bus. 
So as you can see right here, and if I unmute this, it's gonna be essentially just double. So as you can see, our volume shoots up there. Okay, so this is where we get to have some fun and there's really no right or wrong when it comes to parallel compression, at least in my opinion. So we're gonna open up the Steven Slate, the Slate Digital plugins. I really like these to, uh, to beat up some drums. So first we're gonna pull in this, uh, this compressor. This is like the 1176. And then I like to use this um, SSL clone uh, EQ. So what we're gonna do is actually gonna rearrange this and we're gonna, it's gonna scoop a whole bunch of this mid out of here. So this is just our drums parallel compression channel. So I'll actually turn this off just, just for right now. So this is just, this is without it, the EQ. This is with it. Just trying to get a little bit more fatness out of this. 250 sometimes is a great, um, a great frequency to help thicken up a snare. So that sounds pretty good. Now we're gonna engage the compressor and this is where we're really gonna get a little crazy with it. So like four and eight ratio is good for compression, but we almost wanna kinda of limit this. So we're gonna try out 12 first. Now we'll take this off, put it back on. What I'm trying to do is like make a separate channel of drums that are very heavily processed. What we're gonna do is we're gonna blend it in with the unprocessed. So, now we got this. That's our parallel compression channel. We're gonna unmute that and just show you the just the straight, just the straight drums now. So this is before they were processed. Now we have the parallel compression channel, really heavily crunched on. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna find a good blend between the two. So we're gonna start playing these. And we're gonna slowly start fading in this guy. So as you can tell, we get some more thickness out of it. And what we're doing is because we have our essentially our dry drums on our just drum bus and our heavily compressed drums on our parallel compression bus, blending these two together has now created a different sound. And now we have some nice, punchy, aggressively compressed uh, drums but still keeping the cl clarity, you know, before you add all the processing in there. So, now as you can see, we can we definitely added some level to this, which you will do because essentially you are adding a whole bunch of energy to the track. So I'm just gonna group these together so that both faders move in one. And we'll try to get back down to that negative five. So there you go. So now we got our our drums here without the parallel compression and now with it. Just add a little bit more of that like radio sound. So now that we got that, let's listen to our track. Okay, cool. So that is one way to use parallel compression. So I'm going to show you another another way. And this way is going to be a little different. So we already have our vocal bus. I've already bust over our vocals to just control overall level. Let me just uh, move the placement of this down to here.
Okay. So now we got our vocal bus is now at the end here. So this is just, this is where all of our vocals are running to. We only have two channels right now. I gotta go. So as you can see, we got um, all of our vocals are coming in over here. Tell me what to do to tell me what to do. I... So another way to do parallel compression is um, once again, we will add our puke child. Now this is just one type of compressor. To I... use. So that's just for our vocal bus, just the puke child. I gotta go. Tell me what to do to tell me what to do. I... So that's just overall helping our vocals stay a little bit more, you know, nicely in the mix. So now we're gonna add one more uh, bus over here, and this is gonna be Vox Peacock. So once again, another parallel compression. So what we're going to do this time, though, is send our vocal bus straight to our parallel compression bus. So what's going to happen is uh, this is all the vocals are coming in this channel, and then it's bussing it to here. So since we got another way of doing parallel compression, once again, we're just going to, to make this easy, uh, just copy and paste these over here and see what this sounds like. Uh, I gotta go. Tell me what to do to tell me what to do. Uh, oh yeah, you can really hear those uh, compressors kicking in. So once again, we're going to blend in the dry vocal channel, our dry vocal channel with now our parallel compression. I gotta go. Without. So this is without it. I, and then now with it. I gotta go. It just really helps bring vocals and get them right in top, right on top of the mix, like right in front of your face. And I love using this uh, technique just for vocals. Um, so now that we have that done, uh, once again, we are just going to group these together so it's like one fader, so we can just kind of adjust all of our vocals all at once. I gotta go. Tell me what to do to tell me what to do. So there you go. There's two different ways to use parallel compression on your songs, on your mixes. So thanks for watching this video on parallel compression. You can find True Sound Studios on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So hope to see you guys soon.